Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're going to talk about designing graphics for your teardrop camper. want to talk a little bit about how I designed the graphics for my Camp Easy Teardrop and how you can use the same method, super simple method, if you want to add a little bit of graphics or bling to something of your own. Um, what I'm doing is using a very, very readily available piece of software by Microsoft. Um, I'm under the assumption that it probably comes on most computers now for maybe a, you know, a trial period of time. Um, it's called Microsoft PowerPoint. Now, if you're not familiar with Microsoft PowerPoint, it's basically a very simple program that a lot of folks use to build um, overhead slides if they're doing, let's say, presentations for groups. Um, it comes in the Microsoft Office suite of, of standalone uh, applications or programs. And it's just super simple, easy to use. Now, this isn't going to be anything um, elaborate. I'm not going to be, you know, trying to paint the Mona Lisa with it. <laughs> this is for some super simple stuff. But if you're interested in that, follow me along. So when you first open the program, Microsoft PowerPoint, it's going to bring up this uh, slide that says click to add title. Um, it's assuming you're probably going to make some kind of presentation. I'm not. So I'm going to go up to the Home tab. I'm going to click Layout and change that to blank. So now I just have a blank canvas to work off of. It's gonna ask me if I want to use some of these uh, design ideas. No, I'm just gonna hit X. So here's what I wanna do. I want to insert, if you follow the mouse, a picture of my teardrop and hit insert. So now I have a picture of my teardrop on the screen. I, I actually just want the teardrop. I don't want all the other stuff around it. <coughs> and again, I'm gonna click X to the design ideas. While the picture's highlighted, I'm going to hit crop, and you'll see these little black bars. You can crop out most of what you don't want in the picture. So do that, and just click over here in the white area somewhere, and that goes away. So now you can drag the picture up here in the corner, grab this little circle down here, and blow it up. So now we have a nice uh, clean canvas of a teardrop to work off of. Now if you've watched my episodes before, you know I had a couple arcs or a couple swoops uh, that I put on my camper. Here's how I did that. I went up to insert, shapes, and the shapes on this toolbar here um, are more vector based shapes. Vector meaning the, uh, you can blow them up and they still stay nice and sharp. So it's pretty handy to use the ones off this toolbar. I'm gonna go up here to where uh, it says moon. I'm gonna click a shape of a moon. And sure enough, when you put that on there, it just looks like a big blue moon. Well, I don't want it to look like a moon. I want it to look like a stripe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees using that little rotate wheel. I'm gonna skinny it up using the little yellow dot and I want to make it wider by dragging it across. Let's just move it up here. And actually that's pretty close. I'm not gonna do anything else with that. Now this blue right now, I wanna know what it looks like putting a green stripe on my camper. While it's highlighted, I'm gonna go up to Shape Fill and I'm gonna click the eyedropper and I wanna see what it looks like if it matches my green fender. So I'm just gonna put the eyedropper on the green fender and there you see it's turned to green. But it has a blue line around it. I don't want that. I'm gonna to go to Shape Outline click no outline and there I have a nice green stripe on my camper so now I know what that's going to look like now if you've watched my videos before you know that I have a black shadow around that the black shadow is made by clicking the uh, image or the, the the swoop there going up to shape format click on shape effects Go down here to shadow and just click this first preset right here. Now let's put this real hazy blurry shadow around that green arc. Well, I don't want it to be hazy and blurry. I want it to be nice and sharp and black. So while it's up there, I'm going to go back to shape effects, hover over shadow, come down to the bottom and hit shadow options. I'm going to turn the transparency from 60% down to zero because I want it fully opaque. I'm going to turn the blur down to zero because I don't want it fuzzy and now to really make it stand out I'm going to increase the size of it to a little over 100 percent look at that if I want to change uh, where it is I can change the angle of it 
I can make it go higher or lower. Uh, I can change the distance. I can make it further away or not. So let's just pull it back up a little bit, right about there. And that's very similar to what I did on my actual camper. So now if I want to put the other strap on there, <clears throat> I'll just be repeating the same process. I go back to insert, shape. In this case, I'm gonna select moon. I'm gonna pull the moon down here. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. I'm gonna make it a little bit skinnier. Actually, I'm gonna make it a whole lot smaller right here and come to right there. And I want it to be green with no outline and that's already filled in. So I'm just gonna click green, no outline, shape effects, shadow, go back to shape effects, go back to shadow. There's probably a quick way to do this. Shadow options, set your transparency down, set your blur down and then you can increase the size of it until you start seeing it well and look at that so now <clears throat> i have the green and black stripes on this slide just like i have in real life on my camp easy teardrop if you want to um, save this here's what i'm going to recommend i'm going to recommend going over here um, th this little thumbnail on the left is just uh, showing you what all slides you've developed we've only developed one slide so there's only one thumbnail right click on it hit copy Come down here, right click, and hit paste. So now you have a copy of this thing. What I would do is click on the first one and click on the photograph on the first one and just hit delete. And all you're left with is the stripes. Go up here to file, save as. In this case, I want to save it to a little folder um, in my video folder that I'm making for this video. And I'm going to call it decals and I want to save that as a PDF document and I'm gonna click Save I already have one in there called called that I'm gonna override it and click yes now the reason I did PDF and here's a copy of, of the document is that you can blow the PDF up look at this you can blow it up real big very big and the graphics stay nice and sharp now the reason I, um, I elected to do one slide without the camper and one with is that if you take this PDF file to a, your local sign shop to have them cut the graphics, you want them to know what the camper looks like that's going on and where the graphics are gonna be located. And then you want them to have a slide that they can import into their vinyl cutting program, which is this top slide that they'll use to actually cut the graphics. So one is, uh, you know, the first slide is, is the actual graphic they're gonna cut. And two is kind of the guide on what they're gonna to use to cut it by. Now, that's pretty easy if you're gonna have them apply the graphics. If you're gonna apply the graphics yourself, you probably need to use a little math. You may wanna get a tape measure and lay it over the screen and measure how wide the camper is, let's say from right there to the front of the camper to the back. Let's say that's, I don't know, five inches wide on your screen. And if the uh, stripe is, let's say four and a half inches from the, the front of the stripe to the back, um, then you can just do the math and upscale that to how big it would be in real life. So that's just a quick and dirty way to do that. Um, let's go back to PowerPoint and show you another little example. Let's suppose, let me just hit undo so I can bring that camper back up. Let me get rid of this little graphic. Let's suppose I want to do a different kind of shape. You can go up here to insert, shapes. <clears throat> let's say I want to, I don't know, let's say I want to put a sun on there for some reason. You can click the sun and bring it on here. And that's what it looks like. It looks like a sun. Now, do I want a sun on my camper? No. What I can do is I can grab this little orange dot here and I can pull it in. I can make it look like spokes. I can pull it out and make it look like a box. Now, I'm probably not going to use this graphic for anything, but I just want to show you how you can manipulate these shapes. You can make it taller. You can make it wider. Let's say I want to go up here and go to shapes. And I'm going to find a little box that has, here we go, here's a little box, a little rectangle, that one corner has been rounded off. You can click the little shape, drag it over, and now that uh, corner becomes very, very rounded. You can make the box long and slender. 
let's say you uh, you want the the little uh, rounded part to be on the top and, or the bottom you can pull it up like this and make it on the bottom now why would I want to do that well let's say I want to put this stripe here I'm gonna right click and hit copy and I'm gonna hit paste so I've put another one just right underneath it let's say I want this one to be a little shorter okay I'm gonna copy that one and I'm going to paste it drag it down underneath and let's say I make that one a little bit shorter so now isn't that a pretty cool little graphic almost reminds you of the wings um, on some of the old style campers wouldn't that be a cool graphic to have on the back of a on the back of a teardrop so there's a lot of different things that you can do with Microsoft PowerPoint the big thing is to put a, a photograph of your camper on there and that way you can trial different things um, let's say you know I want the shapes to be a different color just copy that um, slide on the left just hit copy you can right click and hit paste and now let's go down here and let's just change those shapes to a different color in this case we want them to be uh, green we click shape format we click the, the green no outline and there we have it so now we can toggle back and forth between hey do I like blue better or do I like green better so this is a real quick and dirty way to practice uh, what you like. Get your kids involved, get your spouse involved, and this is a real fun way that you can make graphics for your, uh, for your camper. So hopefully those are some ideas using Microsoft PowerPoint, which is super readily available, um, if you want to add some graphics or some bling to your own camper. Now, again, Microsoft PowerPoint is um, it's on a lot of computers when you buy them new. Um, people have it for like a trial period. If you don't have it or if your trial period's already ran out, probably somebody that works in an office, a student, teacher, somebody like that is probably going to have it or have access to it. And I wouldn't doubt if you even went to a library if the, if the Microsoft Office Suite's not already loaded on there. So it should be something you can get a hold of. Um, but hey, upload a photograph onto one of the slides of your camper. Um, use that little list of vector images, or not vector images, but uh, vector shapes manipulate those add shadows twist them around do all kinds of things with them and then save that as a pdf document and that's something that your local sign shop should be able to use to upscale and cut out your vinyl graphics so hopefully that'll be something you can use before we get out of here though i want to start a new segment called viewer spotlight um, I have found that this is a whole community, the tier, especially the teardrop builders. It's just like a community. And a couple folks that I want to mention before we hop out of here, um, got some notes. The first comes from Chad Parker in Mobile, Alabama. And Chad has built a 5x8 custom um, teardrop camper on a custom trailer frame. Took him six months to build it. And he's camping and learning a whole lot about the teardrop lifestyle. I think he's been hanging out at a lot of uh, local state parks down there. And instead of a galley at this point, he's using a portable uh, fish cleaning table that has a built-in sink. So that's pretty cool. So Chad, thanks for sending those photographs in. Hope you enjoy that camper, buddy. Um, the second and the last one comes all the way from Sydney, Australia, from Scott Bartlett. And Scott is just now starting um, his road down building the teardrop camper. Um, here's some here's some photographs of you know uh, his template that he's building. He's got the design laid out. Um, his plan is to build a, a teardrop camper around a queen size bed and a two foot deep galley. And he's going to be doing this with an aluminum frame construction, aluminum body that is. And he's going to be using rolled seam welded edges for um, to make it uh, waterproof. So that's going to be pretty cool. That's a little bit non-traditional for teardrop construction. Hopefully we'll get some more photos of that in the future. And, and one thing to mention is that the outside profile was built um, based on the golden ratio. If you haven't heard of the golden ratio, type that in on uh, Google and you'll see what the golden ratio is. It's a pretty neat way mathematically to, um, to draw some aesthetically pleasing shapes. So anyway, thanks for sending that over, Scott. Good luck on your build and uh, keep us updated. So that's all for today. If this is your first time here, I hope you like it. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you wanna come back. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.
chair squeaks. Maybe it's just me getting old. <laughs> <coughs> My chair was lower than I expected, and I'm the one that put it there. How crazy is that? Oh, man.